What were Neanderthals? Creation of God or invention of man? Welcome to Nugget 390. Let's get into these guys, huh? What do you have for us today? We're going to talk about an article out of Discover Magazine, mainly. I see it says here, Neanderthal facts. Are there any facts about those things? Well, they called them facts. Maybe they're not. Genesis 1, verse 27 says, God created man in his own image. There are people that think that Neanderthal was nothing but a human. I've said that for years and years. Other people, and the way they were portrayed early on especially, was they're just a bunch of ape-like creatures. One of the issues is people have for years said that evolution happened, but God just used that method. Let's think about this. God cannot lie. In fact, the Bible in numerous places says that very thing. God cannot lie. So whatever he did, we need to believe what he did. God did not, could not, and would not use a method that violates what he says he did. We've got an issue here because either we have God's word on something or we have man's ideas about that something. And Jesus said in Mark 10 verse 6 that from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. He's talking about Adam and Eve. The context is marriage, divorce, remarriage, and all that. John 5, 46 and 7, Jesus said, For had you believed Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. But you don't believe what he wrote, so you can't believe what I say. So this is a very important point, because who wrote Genesis? Moses. Correct. So we need to believe, according to Jesus, that we need to believe not that Moses wrote something, but that what he wrote. So let's take a look at this Discover, May, June of 2024. They say everything worth knowing about Neanderthals. A brutal relative of ours, uh, maybe yours, but not mine, or underrated genius of prehistoric times. Recent and sometimes controversial research sheds new light. Imagine that. I think you say that all the time. Articles say that kind of thing all the time. But also think about this. The word prehistoric. Prehistory. There really is nothing prehistory because everything in the past is history. But let's keep going. Their initial investigations inspired them to think that they'd identified some of the oldest specimens of Homo sapiens. The Bible also says, Exodus 20, verse number 11, which is right in the middle of the Ten Commandments, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all. He didn't say but all, except the stuff I did beforehand. He just said all. Heaven, earth, sea, and everything in them. So this is an important thing. Early researchers first imagined. What I want you to get is, this whole article is amazing, but notice how often, I didn't even highlight them all, just many of them, about how they didn't know. Or they thought one thing, but now they think something else. Initially interpreted, of the specimens were first found were neither intelligent nor innovative, despite the fact that some of these first fossils were buried beside stashes of stone tools. Neanderthals were swiftly branded a species of brutes. And this is what I was trying to say earlier. When, when they, early on, when these things were found, uh, they were portrayed and taught to us as though they were just a bunch of brutes, a bunch of cavemen, so to speak. But notice how already, how many times imagine, thought, first interpreted, notice how often these kind of statements have come up already. Making them much more advanced than their early discoverers were probably willing to admit. Well, it talks about they found them with tools. Well, now think about this. Genesis 4, verse number 2, says that Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. In order to be a keeper of sheep and or a tiller of the ground, you had to have tools already. You had to have tools to be able to do all of that. So they were very familiar with how to work with this creation early on in Genesis. Cain and Abel are pretty early on. Exactly. Contained around 10 to 30 individuals. Some studies have suggested that they also gathered in much more substantial groups with a 2023 study, has sustained tribes of Neanderthals numbering in the hundreds. So now in this one page alone, they say some people think there was only maybe 10 to 30. And then they go on to say others think it could be hundreds. 
Once again, it is their interpretation of what their preconceived idea already is, and they don't even agree with themselves. And one of these statements is going to make it into a textbook that someone's going to learn, and they're going to be adamant about it because it's in their textbook. That is exactly the point. Genesis 1, 27 and 28. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it, reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. I got to say something here. It says here that God created man in his own image. Well, if you went through this process of this primate evolving into a human through these things like these Neanderthals, which part of this was the image of God? Which one of these animals creation um, post-primate type things was the image of God? It just doesn't make sense. This is another reason you cannot compromise What the Bible says with evolution, it's impractical, it's impossible, it's needless, and it's incorrect to do that. Well, therein lies one of the biggest problems because people start to doubt the Bible because they think they have all this, quote, proof for whatever it is that they're teaching. And when you add years and years and years of daily compounding on it, it really starts to mess with people. Well, I want to add here that there's been times that you've spoke to school groups and mainly Christian school groups, and we've done a survey and we've asked children different questions. They are anonymous. We have found that it's in the fourth and fifth grade that students start questioning the validity of the Bible. They don't seem to be questioning God as much or its existence, but the validity of the Bible. If this is in a Christian school, I can't imagine what a child is thinking that is not in a Christian school and being inundated with evolution. The scales just start tipping the other way quickly. And so my point is, even though your child is only 10 or 11, don't discount what is going on in their minds. There could be a lot of confusion. And this is one of the main reasons you need to keep communication open with your children. Yes, extremely important. But also along those lines, they see things like this in their textbook or their teachers tell them or they watch a film or they do whatever. And it starts to create questions in their mind. And if they ask mom and dad a question, mom and dad, more likely than not, don't really know the answer because they don't study in this. I mean, well, why do they care about that? They're just trying to live life and get by and, and do the best they can. So therefore, the student has one option believe what the teacher says because they keep talking about it and it is from an authority figure on and on and on it goes and next thing you know we got a problem oftentimes mom and dad didn't even know what was happening and that's a shame because the next thing you know they're in college and they really get bombarded with things and they walk away i'm going to plug our video series here we have almost 24 hours worth of information in 12 different lessons that is invaluable to families invest all in kind of subjects related I mean, to creation all, yeah, versus related evolution to creation but yes on every topic concerning creation versus evolution it's only smart to make an investment in something that will last a lifetime in your children's lives. We don't expect you to know this is this topic as well as Steve does or I do, but we have the equipment. We've given you the tools to take and run with. Children are spending hours and hours on YouTube watching things that are senseless, mindless, how-tos, and just stuff that's frankly, could be bad for them when there is information available that can help them. And that personally is frustrating for me because we have the information. The information is there. It doesn't take that much effort. And you can't just throw your children and expect them to learn and pick up on this on their own. And here's another example. And those skills were more advanced than early researchers thought ranging from the tools they made to controlling fire. How could they have had the story right? They're taking it from an evolutionary viewpoint so that they change their mind and they can change their mind. It's only logical because, as some people say, you make the rules, you can break the rules, you can change the rules. Although some research challenges this finding, it is generally accepted now that Neanderthals could make and control fire using it for warmth as well as for cooking. Imagine that. I want to say something here. Can I tell them about the book I was reading? Oh, absolutely. 
I don't know if you've maybe had heard, and oh, it's been quite a few nuggets that I started reading some of the literature that supposedly got people hooked on sci-fi and evolution and all that, because I had read some of these books in the past. It's like, I don't get the connection. But anyway, got a series of Jules Verne books, and I'm enjoying them. And I just completed The Mysterious... Yes, will. Yes. And I just completed The Mysterious Island, which it was very good. It was a great way to calm down my mind in the evenings. But there was a character in this novel that had been on an island for 12 years by himself, and the isolation had basically driven him to become a savage. And he had lost track of time and... The ability to communicate with others and know right from wrong and all of that stuff. He basically, when he was rediscovered, he didn't know how long he'd been like that. He couldn't even communicate well, but with some love and appreciation and friendship and working with this man, he was able to regain his humanity. My point is, people can become, quote, savages based on their environment and their skill set and and the way they have to live given their circumstances. And we can all understand and relate to that. And so I thought that was interesting that I just had finished reading this and here we're talking about these people that they're trying to make them out as some combo monkey man, savage kind of thing. And maybe it was just some people lived in a very rudimentary lifestyle. And we've been talking about fire and cooking with those fires. Well, the Bible also in the book of Genesis repeatedly talks about fire. The point is, everything that this article says, the Bible discusses the similar issue many times in the book of Genesis even, the very first book. Well, it's the point that God created man in his own image, which would be a human being just like we look. Well, he might have been a lot taller and maybe darker. He was able to have fire and tools. It wasn't this whole evolution of this primate and the evolution of tools and the evolution of figuring out how to create fire, that was just all at the beginning as presented in Genesis. Yeah, and just because they might look a little different than most of us, which, by the way, if you find skeletons of all kinds of different people, even now today, they're going to look different. If you only find one or two in somebody's mind, they could conjure up a population of who knows how many. But the point is, they might have been slightly uh, formed a little bit differently than we are just simply because of nutrition and lack thereof of various kinds of nutrition. Okay, I got to interrupt you on that. Have you gone down the aisles at a normal grocery store? Well, No, I think these guys might have been eating better than us. I think we might want to go back to some leaves and herbs and bark and animals instead of, I'm not going to pick on some (laughs) different things, but oh my, I mean, some of this Yeah, but donuts taste so good. I don't Eh, know. Not really. Not really. Not when you get used to not having them. True. But those danishes we had last Saturday were really good. Oh, those are good. Okay. A couple more quips out of this article. But there's a lot we don't know about humans' early encounters. What we do know is that Homo sapiens weren't the only homonyms who fanned flames. We don't know a lot. We do know this. Well, they thought they knew that they were brutes also back then. Two million years ago, we know there's no such thing as two million years ago, the origins of human fire use. This was around the time of Homo erectus. This is Homo erectus would be the first primate that stood up, the first hominin with modern human proportions. At first, early humans were fire foragers, meaning they knew fire would be beneficial. This is all ridiculous. The evidence for the ability of early human ancestors to make fires for themselves, on the other hand, appears around 800,000 years ago. And exactly how they figured that out? Yeah, really. Or even as early as 1.5 million. So that's a 100% difference in time. To say they don't have a clue is an understatement. Notice all the huge time discrepancies. Once again, some think this, some think that, but the textbook only says one thing usually. And they give themselves these ginormous margins of error. Yes. As modern archaeological technology continues to evolve... I don't think so. See, this is the point. They have to use that term. It's Mm -hmm. sort of a reinforcement factor if you just keep hearing it. Evolution in its true definition is some form of life becoming another form of life. 
technology tools, they don't evolve. They change, they get better, the design changes, but they don't evolve the definition of the term. Scientists can look further and further back in the human history of fire. Well, they can't look any further back than Genesis. No. And now they've got here that the human fires have been burning a lot longer than previously thought. Well, more like since the beginning of man. It's the same with tools. It's the same with everything in this article. Everything they talk about. Once again, in Genesis 4.22, it talks about Tubal-Cain. He was an instructor of how to work with brass and iron. They were familiar with how to make tools even way back early on in Genesis. And they weren't some kind of form of savage monkey no, men. No, not at all. They might have had beards, though. And now they're saying that Neanderthals were surprisingly versatile makers. How did they know this, Bob? Yeah, really. Because they think the tools are intelligently designed. Maybe these guys just needed a barber. It could be. Again, more just time frame Here it says again, evidence has arisen. Well, that means it was taught to us early on before this time frame. But we're talking right now, we are talking May, June of 2024. Which means everybody that's listening to this was taught something otherwise than what their supposed new discoveries are and new understandings are. And they're still pushing this idea decades and decades later. According to some studies, Neanderthals could make clothing. Well, the Bible says in Genesis early on, God covered Adam and Eve with coats of skins. He clothed them. Once again, talking about clothing, it's in the Bible in Genesis. Long before any of this understanding or misunderstanding was present, researchers theorize another idea. It's all just ideas. And even more impressive are the claims. Once again, just ideas. This article, I've highlighted several of them here, but there are many more in this one article. It is obviously nothing more than a belief, not science. Other studies suggest Neanderthals worked with pigments to make rudimentary paint. Oh, now they're painters. They're artists. You know what? They probably painted. They probably made clothes. They had fire. They cooked. They... Now they're talking about boats. No way. Yeah, now they're talking about some researchers also argue, that means that some don't, about these boats. They were sailors? Well, maybe that's why they're real scruffy. <laughs> well, guess what? The book of Genesis, God told Noah to build an ark. That's a big boat. Yes, the Noah and family were shipbuilders. A 2023 study found that Neanderthals fashioned implements. The strongest support for the idea comes from a 100,000-year-old Neanderthal. I don't think so. In modern humans, the U-shaped hyoid bone supports the tongue and other muscles that help control speech. Fossil evidence reveals that Neanderthals had hyoid bones too. I imagine they did, because they were probably people. They certainly want some primate, monkey man, savage thing. Yeah, they used to say all they did was grunt and make noise of some kind, but now they're realizing, oh, the I guess they could have talked. The guy in my book grunted mm -hmm. because he just yeah. reverted because he hadn't talked, but once he started talking again, he could talk again. But I realized didn't mean that he was, was fiction, built like a human. That but he did have anything. a soul and yes, humanity. Exactly. It had just gotten lost by being lonely. Early on in Genesis, once again, and Adam said, that means the people that God made first, the very first creation of people on this earth could speak. What do you think of that? They didn't grunt. No, they didn't grunt. And Adam said. So many things that people are taught that evolved and that these primate humanoid things eventually learned and picked up on, God nails it in Genesis that that was already established. It didn't evolve. And that's what we're trying to prove and show with this article that they're scampering around having to change their minds and they're finding things that didn't fit what they used to teach. We know that God created man. He could talk. He could walk. He could make fire. He had tools. He was ready to go. Absolutely. And again, they're talking about what they previously thought, and there's more similarities than they previously thought. They're talking about another one, rem another remained a mystery. They don't have a clue. Now, the new study confirms something. That means that what didn't confirm in their minds before this new study. It is still unclear whether these sounds constituted actual speech. They're still unclear about things. They say they... in. They used consonants rather than vowels more. How do they know 
how, how do, do they, they know, know that? that? How, how do, do they, they even, know that? Yeah, that's ridiculous. When modern humans enter, well, wait a minute. God made modern humans early on. Did they exist with modern humans? And then they're talking about specialists still struggle to answer. Well, it says here that they lived with uh, modern humans. They inhabited Europe at the same time. Probably so, just like those guys lived on the islands. The exactly. ones that hadn't lost their mind were on one island, and the guy who lost his mind alone. They're still humans, and once they got together, then they, uh, the other guy got more humane. Not trying to compare this with fiction, but the point is, we this can understand that. We can it? relate to right. what they're saying, but they didn't make this some Neanderthal that they discovered on this island. They knew this was a man that had just been alone. Yeah, but you know, one thing that's amazing about this, look what it says now. They're talking about using computational modeling according to the model. Well, you can feed a computer whatever data you think you understand and model it, and it's going to give an, ex an answer to what that thought originally was. It doesn't mean it was right. Just like in our days today, you can feed AI a certain theme that you want to say, and they'll spit something out, but that doesn't make it real. The philosophy taught in school systems will affect the next generation and the next generation, including those who govern a nation. And I'm not trying to slam teachers. I don't mean to do that at all. The teachers of today are only the kids of yesterday. And the kids of today will be the leaders and educators tomorrow. So my point is, it matters what we teach them. And all too often, kids grow up and they just don't know if the Bible's true or they don't know if man's word is true. In wrapping up this nugget, we want to read Colossians 2.8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Amen. Oh, wait, I forgot to ask. Have you subscribed yet? If not, please subscribe. Thank you. Like. Give us a like and make a comment and tell a friend about our YouTube channel. This is so important. And again, I want to plug our video series because most of what's in the video series is not found in the nuggets.